You're watching the Original Music Atlanta podcast. All right, welcome back. We are on episode five with the one and only, the original Dixie Duncan. Dixie Duncan's going to be playing at the uh, Atlanta Music Scene Showcase on uh, March 12th at uh, 9.30 p.m. on the acoustic stage in the Dark Horse. Welcome, Dixie. That's right. What's up, guys? Thanks How for having doing, me. Dixie? Doing great, doing great. Uh, so uh, we, uh, we, we had talked... I'm just going to go ahead and get it out out there. <laughs> we had talked two nights ago and had a beautiful conversation. Um, uh, just beautiful, flawless, flowing conversation. And I go to stop the recording, and I had the uh, world-famous spinning beach ball of a Mac. Um, it didn't record anything. It realized we got eight and a half minutes of the great yeah. interview. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, Dixie, thank you again for coming back on. And, uh, yeah, ain't nothing. Yeah, we just wanted to, uh, again, uh, I had been following you since, uh, I guess since kind of COVID had started. Some reason we had friends in Facebook and I, and I started following you. And I noticed you were doing a ton of live streams from your what you call the dungeon. Uh, can you yeah. tell me a little bit about the dungeon? What kind of equipment you're using? What the, yeah, for the sure. idea? For sure. For, for a while there, I was I was starting to look into the live streams and and uh, it was just uh, the next project. You know, there's always the next couple of projects. And then when COVID hit and we had to stay home for a while, I was I, it kind of forced me as well as a lot of us to to learn how to do it differently. So sure. Uh, it turns out I had most of what I needed already in here. I had an interface that I used for recording. I had a, a, my Mac for, that I used for edit that I used to use for editing video. Um, so it all worked out. I have old stage lights and everything. So I just set up this little, the room that I used to, that I used to use for drum rehearsal. And I turned it into a little practice space slash threw up some guitars and turned it into what's the dungeon. Yeah, because I, I actually live in my buddy's basement, so I I call my whole apartment the dungeon, but my <laughs> studio is also the dungeon. That's awesome. Uh, and uh, is it, my name is Raymond Hems, uh, uh, and this is Rick Gathman. We both play in a band called Giza Is Gone, um, and I play in Hope Sanker, and he plays in another band called Say Never. Um, but we're all about original music here on the Original Music Podcast here, in Atlanta, uh, and and we're just trying to give uh, a a platform for for like-minded artists that want to create something new out of nothing, because that's how I view writing and creating music. And, um, and we just happen to end up on the same bill. So we're playing next, next, uh, next weekend, uh, down at Virginia Highlands. If you're in the Atlanta area, um, uh, like I said, Dixie's going to be on uh, the acoustic stage. We're going to be playing the full band stage downstairs and, uh, it should be a great night. It's going to be awesome. I can't wait. Yeah. Like 12 hours. Of original yeah, music. it's a full day of good music, and it's going to be hard to decide which way to go. Yeah. Hopefully, yeah. they get it on, off, on, off. But you never 28 know. Twenty eight X. Yeah, for sure. So, so uh, one question I wanted to ask you is: uh, Are you from the Atlanta area originally? Um, and how did is Dixie? Uh, is that a stage name, or how did you get your name? <laughs> All right, I, I am from Atlanta. I was born in uh, born at Northside Hospital. I've been within an hour of Atlanta, pretty much my whole life, except for when I was 12. Um, uh, I went, my stepdad's from Mississippi and we went and uh, moved out there with his family for a little over a year. So there was a, there was that time. But other than that, I've always been pretty close to Atlanta. Um, the name Dixie is, is it, that came about when I was in rehab in the night, in the mid nineties, actually, uh, I went to this uh, group to get out. Of, I went straight out of high school, actually into rehab and uh, to get out of trouble into the, some of the heavier stuff when I was young, you. a little bit yeah. too young. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, but sure enough, we, uh, I was in this group of group of kids, uh, you know, my, my age kids, maybe some, a few, a little older, a few, a little younger, a bunch of teenagers and early twenties kids, uh, trying to get off, you know, trying to get off drugs together. So we, we find stuff to do late at night. Uh, sometimes it would be breaking into stone mountain park and climbing the mountain in the dark <laughs> and waiting for the sun to come up so we could exit legally, nice. uh, climbing water ties, stuff that, uh, you know, not in, the counselors and the and the steering committee. They did not do these things, but it's what we did to stay out of stay out of getting into into drugs. Anyway, one of the things that was not so frowned upon was we'd find a basketball goal where where we'd either get permission to tuck the lights on or where where we could cut some lights on a basketball court. Excuse me, and uh, so we're playing basketball. I'm I'm this uh, metalhead 
uh, kid, you know, I got my black boots on and my, I probably had a trench coat to be honest with you. And, and all these cats, there's a lot of jocks in this rehab, believe it or not. And I was actually, I, I'm from Tucker high school. I can play a little basketball. I was on the last team to get picked, of course. And we were doing this tournament style. So as my last team of, of rejects goes, it was, it was kind of like something out of a Disney movie. You know, I was killing it. Well, I had my Dixie hat on. I had the clothes on my back. I was, I, I didn't have a place at the time. I was, I went, I, I was uh, homelessness. That's a whole other thing we can get into. But anyway, I, I kind of lived with these rehab cats for a while. So I had my Dixie hat and my, my ripped up jeans and this one Metallica shirt. That's all I had for a while. And uh, so everybody just started calling me by Dixie because that's what my hat said. And so I'm killing it at this basketball game on this first night. And, and everybody just starts, Dixie, oh my God. Dick. And just so Dixie became, and in this rehab group is also where I met my my first band and actually after we all left rehab we we started you know we that's how we i came into the atlanta scene was with this band 10 till 4 so that i started being introduced as dixie duncan from the stage and everybody just agreed that it's, it's a pretty rock and roll name so i just i'll roll with it yeah that, it is indeed a rock and roll name. <laughs> yeah that's a great name actually the name before that was kind of cool too but was that uh, the name before that prior yeah. to that was kind of cool Ten oh till, yeah um, 10 till 4 yeah, yeah. So that yeah, was the totally. name of your first kind of like 6 a.m. ish. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah totally. Yeah. 10 till four was uh, my first band. Yep. So uh, other. So you went from getting out of drugs, to doing something that could kill you by doing totally. something that could kill you. Yeah, totally. Right, right. Which is and, to, and, to, and went from doing drugs to doing something that'll drive you to doing drugs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah, no doubt. Right. <laughs> so all Certainly. right. What what? what's the sound what's your sound what what who my are sound your influences as a, as a, what do you sound like what do you, you I, I call i call myself gypsy trash but that doesn't really explain it too much but uh my influences as far as guitar goes i would say my number one influence is aldi miola real latin oh. a latin speed picking flavor as far as uh metal guitar players i you know like i said i was i i started playing guitar as a kid because of metallica so of course i yeah, I started with that, and just like the hardcore, I, I had to. I, I turned my nose up to the newer stuff for a while, and then uh, you know, grow to love some of it anyway. But in in any case, and then I and then I love my blues. I love Stevie Ray. I love uh, anything back. I love Robert Johnson. I listen to Robert Johnson, BB King, of course. I've seen BB several times. He was one of my heroes. Wow. Oh yeah, yeah. But yeah, I love. So you're obviously a, mix. The, uh, a Kiss fan. Yeah, we oh, yeah. yeah, we see the kiss dolls there back yeah, there. Yeah, we don't love kiss. My, my my parents were my parents got me into some good music at a young age. Yep, I remember my kiss trash can is is one of my prefer, the earliest yeah. things I can remember. Wow, I, I think there's <laughs> there's one thing that we should all, uh, especially in these days where it's difficult to uh, you know to earn any money making music because you have to just give it away on streaming services. Uh, kiss had lunch boxes they uh, had trash cans they yeah. had shirts mm -hmm. they had i mean there's nothing they coffee don't cups have. coffee cups uh, you right. know those types That's of things right. caskets condoms i mean what do you want <laughs> yeah. i mean it, it was really uh really still even to this day i would say the best marketed band uh the kiss army well gene this is yeah. genius yeah yeah, he knows, yeah right he knows how to make the money yeah. for sure now mm -hmm. uh you had said something about um you had met uh, Gene Simmons and Paul Stanley at one point. No, 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 okay. I didn't meet those guys. Oh, okay. So who was it? That was at Myrtle Beach and that was Drive Twenty Two. Okay, no, it wasn't Drive Twenty Two. It was Neil. Was it Neil Blades? Uh, these podcasts are just kind of yeah. I like, know you guys right. are cranking them out. Yeah, for sure. This is what happens yeah. when we lose a podcast. We, yeah. we, we get too much <laughs> right, information totally. coming in in too many days. I, and it's, I know, it, man. It I know. Lost, so. But I will say this: uh, one thing I meant to mention last time was uh, looking on the back wall there. Uh, I do see a picture of Al Di Miola uh, yes. playing a Les Paul custom black, probably. Is it? Yep, yep. That's the one. Um, and I, I had just recently, literally the past uh, month, uh, went and saw Al Demiola down at uh, uh, City, City That's One. That's right, you did. I forgot yeah. about that. And, uh, Man, yeah. I, was at, I saw three shows of him in one day that day. That same day? You saw the acoustic, yes, that, I, that acoustic I, show? I saw, I saw both of his performances as well as a private show in between them. Wow. Did That's you? Cool. Okay. So that was yeah. a little sketchy. Um, I was a little bit sketched because... Uh, uh, check it <laughs> let me see it what do you got 
Oh, I got nice, this, brother. This this is an Aldi Miola signature PRS, that, by the way. Man, no that's hold on. That's uh, Aldi. Aldi. Yeah, that's this is sick. the prototype. This is the prototype of his PR. Uh, PRS sent me this. Wow. When I was endorsed by them, it was left over after he got it all figured out, and I, I had him stick some bare knuckles in it, some bare knuckle pickups. You... It's when I was playing with I Empire. Okay. Okay. And That's... which we had talked about the other night uh, when I was working with Corey Lowry in the studio, and, and Corey was involved heavily in the I Empire thing, and, and yeah, totally. Yeah, it's just really interesting that that it's a, such a small world, small circle yeah. of artists in in Atlanta. You know that you know we tend to kind of move in packs we're wolves yeah. you know that's really all we are but when i saw al um i was i was thinking that i was going to see uh you know a les paul uh you know some hot amps uh yeah know, i had no idea what i was going to see and and he came out and did the uh, classical acoustic uh mm -hmm. uh show and he had another yeah. guitar player with him which i don't know his name but he was amazing yeah, yeah, he was. Do you know? Who I that don't was? remember his name either. He's uh, the, he was, if I'm not mistaken, he was from Spain. Was he was he was yeah, he was from Spain, right? Yeah, he was. And the other guy, the other guy, the drummer was from Romania, and then the uh, of course the percussionist was from uh, India, said Budapest, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bombay, Bombay, or Bombay. Or yeah. yeah, that's what that's what hasn't, I said. Yeah. Hasn't Al Dimio always been kind of a classical guitar guy? No, he started off uh, electric, and he he started off when he was when he did with. Uh, Return to Forever with Chick Corea. It was, it was electric, but uh, okay. But yeah, he certainly okay. went off and did. He's got so many different projects. In fact, I I wasn't sure what what we were going to see either that night, uh, whether it was going to be acoustic or electric. And it and even two nights later, he was on the same tour playing full band wow. uh, electric. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so it just depends on the setup or who he can get in town. I suppose right? who he can yeah. hire. Yeah. yeah, it was amazing to me. Uh, but, um, the tabla. I think is how you say the percussionist. Mm -hmm. yep. It is totally. Uh, the tabla player from Bombay, India, was sitting, uh, was sitting down, like you know, cross-legged, sitting down, uh -huh. and doing the most amazing. It's one of the hardest instruments to play on totally. the planet, and if you can dude play the, it well, dude it's had the traditional amazing. Yeah. Jobs. He was doing it really. Like they do it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. really, yeah, it was, it really, was so really good, so watch. cool to watch. Yeah, he does a lot of stuff with different uh, world instruments players. I, I have a, let's see if you guys can see over here on the floor, I have a this 55 string what? Bandura from Ukraine. Wow. He's got a, Al Demiola's got a Christmas album with a Ukrainian Bandura player. It's just him and the Bandura player doing a doing a Christmas album. Wow. And he's got so much stuff out there that I, I even, I, I had to, I got to search to find some of this stuff. Wow. That's pretty sick. Did you just say 55 strings? Yeah. yeah, yeah. You could just say yeah, piano, thick, can't you? Man. Yeah. What's that? <laughs> it's just as easy to say piano. <laughs> yeah, right. This thing is this huge chunk of wood. Oh, Look at this, wow. guys. Good lord. <laughs> and right. the strings cross. They go. They're higher on this side. Some of them, and some, and they cross right here. It's like uh, the black strings are here. The white strings are here. It's insane. Wow. And you sit with it in your lap like this. You play the. Ba These are the twelve bass notes, and then you. It's That's like amazing. a harp. I don't know if you can get the tone off of this. Wow. Yeah. That's cool. Those are just, just reg beautiful. Reg regular slinkies, right? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah totally. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's super cool, man. That's crazy. Yeah. Well, you were you were saying that uh uh you know, gypsy trash, I think we were talking the other day. Um you 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 tend to do a one man band type of uh looping. Uh, That's right, live uh, live looping, yeah. Yeah, live looping and and you might play a bass or you might play an acoustic or how yeah, yeah, it's usually it's usually I do I have my Acusal acoustic uh, six string multi scale. It's a headless it's a headless acoustic, and I have been running a four string Acusal jazz bass until recently. I got some electronics issues. It's probably just the jack. I just got to resolder. But I have a five string uh, headless Acusal bass that I run, and I and I use them back and forth. Usually, I'll I'll beat out a I'll either beat out a a beat on the on the guitar run that with a loop either with the bass or the guitar through an octaver do some rhythm guitar stuff and then i'm free to now that i have a band i'm free to play lead guitar all day long that's awesome yeah and then are you are you singing on top or are you just uh instrumental i do i i have i have 
like the the new album that's coming out is all instrumental 15 songs ain't a word on it but i do have a lot of a lot of tunes i have an, an acoustic project i got just my singer songwriter stuff and then i have a bluesy rock band so and i just i mix all the stuff if if you're coming to see me as a solo act i'm gonna play i'm throwing stuff in from all three projects when's that album coming out that's uh all all instrumental all instrumental that's a that's lullabies for the sleep deprived or lsd2 right. it's a sequel to my yep. first album from yep. 2012 that comes out april 20th okay. just like the first one did okay all right so 420 we can uh 420, 420 we can yeah. look for lsd2 um, lsd2 on 420 that's right I, I love it um you you so you brought up kiesel's now yes uh, yes your kiesel guitars are uh, and you said multi-scale. Can you, for people yeah. that may or may not know guitars. Yeah, multi, multi-scale is just, I'll, I'll show you real quick. I got my acoustic here. Um, multi-scale is when the, it's called, it's otherwise known as fanned frets. You can see how mm -hmm. they go in opposite directions there. And it's for perfect, uh, you get perfect intonation. I tune, I tune low and I also play seven strings and five string basses and whatnot. So having those lower strings at a farther distance you get more tension so the string doesn't flub too much. Yeah. Let me yeah. see the um the where where do you tune that he headless acoustic? Uh, right down here uh, each one has a little you get you turn them fine tuning. And it and it pulls it pulls it uh pulls it tight. Those you put the ball in here, you are unbelievable. Here. Yeah, those are cool. They're really they're really neat. I've I've got a I've, this I play the hell out of this thing. That's, I've got a year in this and I'm wearing a hole in it already. Yeah. Nice. Uh, Just over a year. No, that's yeah, a, played, that's an acoustic <clears> electric obviously, right? Yes, that's right. Yeah, um, yep. and and uh, so the the fan fret helps uh, with intonation, which means like if you uh, if you fret an E note up high on the neck, that it's gonna it's gonna have a better tendency, a higher tendency of actually being an actual E and not slightly sharp or flat. Totally. Yeah, yeah. and plus it looks cool. Now, now, yeah, right. You know, I've always I've never played a fan fret guitar. Um, but I, like cor playing chordally, if you're playing like kind of chords, um, how how does that work out? With the, how that, does that feel under your fingers as you work your way up the neck? That's where it that's where it hits you the most it, it, is if you're at your traditional uh, singer songwriter chords down here, your GCD. Mm -hmm. That's where it's the most awkward. Mm -hmm. you, 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 I got small. I, I don't have guitar player hands. Small hands, short fingers. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's a little bit of a crunch here. But everything else, after about the fifth fret, uh, just feels supernatural. Your hand, your hand turns that way anyway, yeah. all the way up. Your 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 uh, your normal or parallel at about the ninth. Yeah. So as a lead guitar player, that's that's all the happy spots anyway. Is all up in here. Sure. But when you when you get down to those those open chords, though, it is a little bit a little bit weird. Yeah. Mm. But it just you get used to it. Now when I when I pick up a a normally fretted guitar, it, it kind of I have to. It takes me a second. It kind of they, they look inverted. It's not like to me. putting a donut on a baseball bat and easy to <laughs> totally, swing. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Once you get down there, then you're loosened up. Yeah, right. yeah. Well, uh, does that lend to using a capo, or do you not use capos on those guitars? I don't think you could. Uh, could no, you? it's it. Uh, you can. Yeah, you can totally use a capo. Up. It's just that right. you got to well, put it implement sideways. that angle. Yeah. I'm sorry. You just have to put it on an angle. Right. Totally. Yeah. Implement that angle. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's that's cool. That's uh, that's uh, out of all my guitars in the studio here. I do not have. Guess what's going to happen soon? I do not have. You're a... welcome. <laughs> I'll send you the link, man. They got this hey. built online builder. It's it's a curse. It's so much fun. I sit there and build guitars all day long. Their, yeah, and their, their finishes right are they're unlike any other. They totally, they have build, so many cool ones. My buddy, like we mentioned, my buddy Billy Gray's a Kiesel player, and his guitars they're just gorgeous i mean mm -hmm. the finishes on them are sick yeah yep. you well, can select every piece of wood on there yeah yeah, yeah. that uh yeah. what um what was the fretboard on that headless acoustic that looked like wormy some sort of a different oh it, uh uh pale moon ebony pale moon ebony i'm not yeah sure. it's, a, it's a white ebony it's got like black was lightning yeah. in it yeah oh, hold yeah, on you yeah, can yeah. see yeah there you go wow yeah that's awesome Yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's a cool cut. Um, are you familiar with Brazilian rosewood? Oh yeah, for yeah. sure. So Brazilian rosewood was kind of the sought after fretboard um, for for many years on all of the Gibson stuff, uh, mm -hmm. and it I don't know why, but the government got involved um, and made it illegal for you to like own it. 
Like, oh, wow. Uh, to, to the point where uh, there were guys like, you know, Bonamassa and some of these guys that have these amazing guitars that would not leave the country with their guitar because they wouldn't be able to bring it back in. They were talking about. Yeah. I remember oh, hearing that. Insane. Yeah. I used to remember. Uh, yeah. And the in a music oh. store and remember hearing that. And the FBI actually raided uh, Gibson Custom Shop at one point to, uh, to either collect all of their stockpile of, of this. I guess it was sold under the, the guise of, uh, uh, you know, this was uh, the Brazilian rainforest wood. Oh, okay. And, and you shall not use it kind of thing. <laughs> so even though it's done and down and ready. Yeah. 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 Oh, it's been at that point. Yeah. At that point it was, it was they had it for 15 years, you know, mm -hmm. yeah, that's crazy. Anyway, I digress. That's, uh, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. Uh, well, let's talk about your set. Um, uh, we've been bringing up the fact that we are going to have a time change. Uh, I, was it spring forward? I think we're springing forward. Yeah. So you're going to go on at 930, but it's going to feel mm -hmm. like 1030. Okay. okay. So just so you know, it's there's going <laughs> to be a, yeah, there's going to yep, be a time yep. change there. Right there in the sweet spot. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, so what was uh, when you were growing up, what was your, uh, well, you, you know, you talked about some of some of the influences, but what was your first record that you got and you were like, and you had a guitar and you were like, I got to try to learn this. What, what my was the first that? record? Of, is when I said I, I've been in Georgia all, all my life, except for the year when I was 12, we moved out to Mississippi. Uh, my stepdad had played guitar and we moved out there to a place. I didn't have any friends out there. We, it was a dirt road. The next person was a few miles down. I mean, there was nothing to do. I either went to work or school every day. And when I got home at night, I took my stepdad's guitar and went to my bedroom. And I had two cassettes that I brought from Atlanta to Hole, hole in the Wall, Nowhere, uh, Mississippi, and it was Justice for All by Metallica, and, and of course, uh, uh, with Youth Gone Wild, uh, huh. Skid Row. Skid Row, Skid Row right? Yeah, yeah. Was that uh, Sebastian Bach? Of course. Okay. Yes, yeah, yeah. In his prime? Yeah. Of course. Yeah, <laughs> yeah totally, totally. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, by the time I got back to Georgia, like 14 months later, I could, on the guitar, I could play at, at least the root notes, so all the, you know, the bass, the bass line, basically, to all these parts, and and then I just met when I got back, I met met other kids that played guitar and, you know, smoked pot and we and we bond we bonded, you know. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> totally. um, so uh, when you're playing live uh, and you're looping and such, when you're looping, uh, which which looper are you using? Are you using just a single loop pedal or are you using a big I'm, floorboard? I'm thing? using a, a boomerang, a boomerang three. Oh, it's, wow. I, I, I use three, uh, three channels regularly. It's got the option to use a fourth. I, I have it set up to do so, but until I start writing again, I'm not using it. I regularly use, will use three channels though. And then I also run the sidecar, which just gives me more performance options, oh, a little bit quicker, cool. quicker setups and so, stuff like that. Obviously the boomerang is self explanatory. So you can, Get one thing going, get a second thing mm -hmm. going, get a third yeah. thing going, and then on top of it, sync. Yeah, and then yeah, and you can add add to any of those. It, now that you have three going separately, you can add to them, stop them, go simultaneously. You can get just the drums going and oh. break it down. Yeah. So you can turn each one on or off. Depending. That's right. Oh, that's pretty cool. And you just got to figure out, you got three channels, so you got to, if you want to do the, the dynamics, you just got to figure out where you want to place whatever you're you're building or you right. know orchestrally yeah that's cool no um the boomerang that i saw uh i i don't know you know you said boomerang three what i probably mm -hmm. saw was like a boomerang one uh okay. there, there was a guy named ian moore that was playing um i used to i still follow him great player um but he was playing at smith's old bar and and at the end of a song he hit like a chord and then hit something on the boomerang and it just kind of kept that chord going. And there was like this, this wheel that he could roll forward and back. What is that? Um, I don't know if you could, what I use it now, that's not on this boomerang. However, I had that boomerang also. Yeah. Um, I, in fact, I still own it. Uh, I'm a uh, buddy of mine's borrowing it, but, um, but it was, the, it was the uh, output volume. So oh. you could, uh, you got the loop going. You could still you could play over top of it, 
uh, roll that volume back and the loop volume, if your loop volume is going to go down. Your your live volume would continue to come through, but the loop volume, you could fade out the loop. Gotcha. Um, I actually had a song on my on my first album where I'm, I'm doing an Evo phrase on the guitar over one phrase and it comes out. I roll it down, kick on to the next because you can do two phrases on that one. Kick the next phrase on, fade it in. And it was a different phrase in the same key. So the what I was doing on the Ebo worked and it was uh, e- cool. you know eerie sounding. But it was, yeah, basically a volume. Yeah. No a loop a loop volume. Okay. So then that makes total sense. So he hit he hit a chord. Now were you able to um reverse a phrase? Yeah, there were there was there's re- reverse, uh there's a handful of things. Uh half you, half time, I think you could yeah, I guess if you can half time, you can double time. Right. Um yeah, stuff like that. And then you get into one where you just hit hit one time and that way you can it'll stop without you having to stop it if there's some kind of fancy thing that you wanted to do or whatever. Gotcha. So that, that must have been what he was doing. He hit a chord um that was the end of that song, and it obviously was the same key of the next song coming in, and he put it in reverse, and that's what uh-huh. he was doing was bringing the volume down to go back to go into that that all makes okay. sense okay. total uh, sense now yeah 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 well, thank you for the so boomerang. interesting as a drummer yeah you're welcome hey, <laughs> yeah, thank what, you. anything i can <laughs> do totally, to help out thank you for the boomerang lesson uh rick do you know what an ebo is i of course i do okay what is it it's a thing that yeah <laughs> it, it, it uh you use it kind of as a if you were to play a a violin yeah you totally. use it on your guitar okay and it's kind of a slide, yeah, type instrument that Dixie. That would you like you, to uh, Would you like to help Rick out here and explain what an <laughs> Ebo is? Hey, they have a that's new awesome, one now. Yeah. They actually have a tiny new little bow out now. That's for guitar players. Have you seen that? Oh uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, you do. <laughs> I've seen, I do know I've what an Ebo is, though, Mister Smart Guy. <laughs> so yeah, no, an Ebo Ebo's yeah. got a. It's an electromagnet, and you hold it over where you would normally pick. You just hold it over. Actually, it's got two grooves to where you could put on the strings next to the one that you're using and so there's nothing touching the one that you're using and it creates a vibration where you don't have to pick the string so you fret it here and it just constantly goes so it, it, there's no attack from the pick just like they're on a viol- on a string that's exactly what i meant to say yeah <laughs> yeah totally. that's what i thought you said <laughs> so 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 with that said and, and i know we're i know we're going down guitar nerd bill but i mean it's our hey, third. It's quite all right. It's yes, our, it's our third podcast with Dixie <laughs> trying to get this thing yeah. done. Yeah, so, no doubt. Totally, totally. <laughs> um, the reason why I wanted to go down that road, Dixie, was uh, during COVID, I got turned on to a piece of equipment that I didn't know existed. I had heard it, and I, when I heard it, I was like, "Wow, that that what is that?" And uh, and so we we just talked about the Ebo. The Ebo was really cool, but it was it was limited to only being able to to uh, use on, on one string. Like you could obviously move the Ebo and do different strings. But um, I got I got turned on to these, and I don't know if you can see this too much, Dixie, but uh, but I got turned on to these, and this is the uh, the Sustainiac uh, pickup right here which is a, okay. which is essentially it's an ebo for all of the strings at one time what okay yeah so i can turn this thing on and hit a d chord or any i can hit a chord and it will just continually magnetically vibrate the chord to will it will never stop playing that is cool the, i've, I've heard, heard how you I've heard that of a but i never knew what it, what it did yeah so not only will it cool. do that, yeah. I mean, and and for me, I, you know, if you can see over my shoulder, I'm using Kempers. Uh, the yeah, two, totally. The, the tube amp stuff is is great, but it's just it's you know, sign of the times is not really a. a That's a, a Queen's right song, by the way. Just for your information, what Black Star? Sign of the times. <laughs> oh, sign of the times. Yeah, a Prince <laughs> song too. Um, but but anyway, I him and I, we were talking about Queen's right earlier, and he doesn't. Yeah, you know, I'm not a fan. Like silent lucidity is not, not my thing. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, yeah, yeah. The, the the Kemper stuff uh, didn't feel like the tube amps, like it, like you, it just didn't react the same. But when I put a sustainiac a sustainer on it, now it kind of feels like a tube amp that's really loud. Okay. But it doesn't have to be really loud. But anyway, yeah, yeah. I digress down guitar nerdville. <laughs> I apologize. Yes. Yes. So it's all good. So. Uh, uh, 
you were talking uh, on the last show that didn't the the, the show that never existed uh, about uh, festivals that you're doing in Wisconsin and and mm-hmm. and you're you're playing Sturgis and biker biker events. Can oh, you? That's right. Yeah. yeah let's go into yeah. that. Let's talk about that. Yeah, definitely. That's that's been my goal for a minute. Is in fact, when I started touring as a solo act, uh, me and my tour manager up all night talking about ways we could do this, and both of us had never been to Sturgis. And so he's from he is, is from Wisconsin. We we routed ourselves into Sturgis. I talked to uh, Nigel uh, and Jesse about getting me in up at Full Throttle, um, and they they let me play up. They got me to play up there, and then I uh, he knew we we then we he was buddies with this MC up in North Dakota. So they have a big party the week after Sturgis every year. So we rolled up through there and we, we played at the, it's a big ride, a couple hundred bikes. They do like 250 mile ride through the, through the countryside up there. And then they have a big party at the end of it, steak dinner and whatnot. Well, I play played at the part at the party. And so that has grown into it the week after Sturgis every year. I have a full week. It's, it's Dixie Duncan and lunacy MC week up in, in devil's Lake. You know, we do a whole week of stuff. I play at this, these different bars throughout the week. And then I do the ride with them and I play at the party at the end of the ride every Sunday. Oh, that's super then cool. we roll into Wisconsin and uh, I've become kind of a local in Wisconsin. I got radio support out there and everything. So I'll stay for a few weeks. And then, uh, yeah, that's the thing. I'm constantly looking for the the bike uh, Tomahawk Tomahawk rally in Wisconsin is usually how long I stay. And that signifies my time to head back uh, just in time for Biketoberfest. And wow. then uh, this year I just got a last minute offer to play uh, spring bike rallies going on right now i told him I, I couldn't do it i got too much going on with the record but let's go right this second i will book next year so i'm hoping yeah, for awesome. a callback on that you know i'm trying to book from here point this point on i'm trying to constantly just add whatever uh rallies i played last year i want to play all those this year and see what i can add in this i'd like to bounce back to and i can do hippie festivals and bike rallies all year long if i could you know yeah that's cool you did iron horse too i think you said didn't you uh, yeah iron horse saloon also yeah that's cool uh, place. B- bounce back between back and forth between those two and drag pipe and then uh down and up in deadwood just down the road i play uh at uh, deadwood tobacco uh I, there's i think this year i get to play uh on the big out they got a big main stage out in downtown deadwood i think i'm playing on that this year that's been the rumor we'll see what happens either way i'll get the tuesday night at uh the tobacco company deadwood deadwood is uh what state is that that uh, South Dakota. Okay, South. It's Dakota. right outside of Sturgis. It's 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 when you're going to Sturgis, you're going to go to Deadwood too. It's part of the the uh, experience. Gotcha. And is it, uh, it when you run roll through a place like that, um, like Deadwood, isn't that like OK Corral and Doc Holiday? And do you get a vibe? Yeah, totally. You get a vibe of of man, I am literally in the old west kind of a thing yeah so, yeah totally a lot of those places are untouched you can go and you can go in the room where uh where billy the kid was shot in the back you mean you can go right in there and sit down uh you, in fact his his graves up there in deadwood him and uh what calamity jane wow yep, their their graves are up there you can go yeah. through and see all that stuff it's, it, it's pretty neat just driving through the entire states it's just like your head's back and forth like a shark it's like man look yeah. at that look at that and it's, it's, it's just beautiful so much cool stuff yeah yeah, yeah. I, I gotta go i gotta check that out oh, for sure. like, yeah. Yeah, as far as a bike ride goes good lord mm. mm-hmm. yeah yeah mount rushmore is right around the corner you got crazy horse so yeah. how yeah. big is how big how big is mount rushmore when you see it in person is it is it bigger or smaller feeling like i've never smaller seen than it. i thought yeah, yeah. smaller yeah. than yeah. i yeah thought like everybody gonna, says yeah. that yeah totally but it's it's very it's it's no less cool i mean it's it's yeah. awesome definitely it's a cool experience the, the, the road up to mount rushmore is a great ride it's a couple hours from sturgis so but it's again it's part of if you're up there that's something you're going to want to do and then the other thing is uh devil's tower and that's oh, a little yeah. bit farther because that's in montana montana but it's only i mean i don't even think it was three hours okay yeah, so that, De- devil's tower uh, i mean i i i uh uh close encounters that is the only reason i know about that you know yeah totally. and then you know my age that that was a movie that back in the day um what is that thing is oh good you know what that's a good question and then we were sitting there talking about it the whole time it's because it looks like a giant petrified tree right <laughs> i mean it looks when you're up on it like, that's like giant tree stump that somebody cut, hacked off yeah i don't i don't know we walked around the whole thing and we were arguing over what it could be uh, <laughs> me and a couple dudes i honestly had just met uh some cool cats but i just met but uh 
I don't know. I don't know exactly what it is. What was your thought though? What'd you, t- what'd you tell them when you guys were talking? Or, do I, you remember? I, I, no, I think I come up with the giant petrified tree. It's, okay. That was what it mine. looks like. Fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> that was mine. But I mean, are it's they not say- like the hole to hell or anything crazy like that? Right. Yeah. The yeah no, 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 that, no, there's some people there. There's some, uh, there's some, uh, sus- uh, superstitious folks up there though. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I mean, I don't know if it's supposed to be like a volcano or if it's a. It definitely doesn't look like any other, any other mountain or anything I've ever seen. Yeah. Right. Yeah, right. That's the whole. It's super. Thing. Yeah, it's definitely unique. Okay. Well, we're gonna have to do a little research on the old yeah. pod here and yeah, yeah, find out what that is for sure. So, what was the deal with we? We were talking about. I know I'm I'm getting out of order with our questions, but I'm going just because of what I'm looking at. You've got your Ace Fraley and your Peter Chris and 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 your your guys back there that you said you you did a giveaway. Oh, that's right. Yeah, from I do my Monday night live stream live from the dungeon. Um, they're almost always on Monday. In fact, I just, I just got done with a, a Sunday bonus one tonight before I, we got together. But, um, every Monday night I do a, uh, well, I don't give a guitar away every Monday night, but we, right. we do the guitar giveaway every, every Monday. It adds to it. Um, I just take basically people, people give tips and donate to the dungeon to support it. And so I take those and put that on a list of a hundred. And when I get a hundred slots filled i i spin a wheel right live right there live you know we spin it and pick a number and uh, at one point i had seven guitars hanging up back here that were giveaway guitars a few of them were mine that i was getting rid of and and people people will donate guitars to the cause um when when it's one of my guitars that goes then i i put it back in if i i might get another guitar or i put it back into cables and lights and stuff for the room if it's a donated guitar that that goes then i will i put half in and and half is donated uh but and i let the person who sent the guitar choose where that money goes that's cool yeah that's that's always good to 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 do something like that we might actually come up with a guitar to donate to you uh around here oh yeah there's no kill that'd be killer that'd be yeah. easy that'd be killer what, what's that guitar over your left shoulder if you don't mind you know, asking the my blue, left shoulder the blue one yeah what this one here is yeah. i call her that's my number one it's a it's an american strat i actually got this uh what late 90s i think my girl at the time uh talked me into playing a guitar competition at like a locos or something and i i didn't want to go but she was like just go do it and i'm like those guys are real good you know she's like well you're okay i walked in there late with a seven <laughs> string that was out of tune they plugged me in and said just play for like 90 seconds and i ended up getting first place and i and i didn't like strats uh but so it's in a closet for years and years and then i kind of started getting into blues and and uh less metal because i like my shredders you know and yeah. i sort of listening to guys who can wail on some blues and being like, I got to open up my mind. You know, yeah. you hear some coward or when I found, and I'm not saying it's blues, but when I found out Demiola, I'm like, this guy's shredding and it's not metal at all. You know? Right. So it, as, as a kid, I'm like, this is blowing my mind. So anyway, same thing when I found bl- good blues players. So I dug the old strat out with the Brown strings and, and I played it and I'm like, that's why these blues cats play these things. So I got it set up and I just fell in love with it uh, cool. after years. And then I had, I got it. Uh, I'm endorsed with a, uh, bare knuckle pickups out of uk and i had them want, uh, wire me up some pickups uh based on uh david gilmore's sound i like me some pink uh, floyd oh, oh cool. absolutely yeah man but uh, so i've used this on i've used this on several but yeah this is probably my this this may be the guitar i've had the longest of the well, ones I'm glad I, I asked have. about it it's yeah. A cool yeah, guitar. yeah this is a really it's a really nice one thank and, you and to be honest um i've not seen that color green on 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 an american strat like yeah, I, don't, totally. I don't know if I've ever seen that before. It's I've a seen high, that color on one. a guitar, but not a Strat. I don't think either. Yeah, I think it's an O. I think it's a O two. So it's a twenty year old guitar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, you you said something about uh, bare knuckle pickups. Talk to yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. Talk to me about those. Yeah, there. I I can't remember how. I honestly, I I know what caught my. I don't know what like the ad that I saw or somebody was talking about them, but I I I've been training MMA since I was nine years old. I actually used to uh, train fighters. And uh, so I saw bare knuckle pickups and I'm like, Ooh, I go and look and see what this is all about. Just kind of almost laughing and jokingly. And then I see a bunch of the cats that are using them. I'm like, okay, well, I, I like some of these, a lot of metal guys were using them. And then I started, I, I researched them and they're like a nice boutique pickup. And, and I started listening to cats who play them, listening on the record. Like I like all these cats and the way they sound. So I started ordering a couple. And then after a while, I uh, talked to Tim uh, Mills, the owner up there, and he started giving me 
give me cost on them and everything. So I put them on a bunch of my guitars. So it's just the way they're dipped, the way they're they're wound or what? Way yeah, it's... totally. They're they're all hand wound and they have they have so many different flavors now. And, and actually, I haven't ordered anything in a while, but now they're starting to like you know mess with the way they look as well as as good as they sound they're starting to do colored covers and everything like that and uh you know the burnt chrome or whatever yeah but yeah cool. i mean every one of them they got and they're not all like i said a lot of the metal guys like them but they have they have uh you know your blues players and different less aggressive pickups as well and I, like i said i got a david gilmore sound out of this one but uh when i got the aldemiola you know i'm playing with i empire so this this jazzy tone guitar isn't really what they were look what i was looking for yeah. so i had them put some of their heavier uh pickups in that aldemiola and it was just it sounded great cool so so when you say <clears throat> excuse me uh when you say less aggressive um like, do you do ohm readings? And I'm, I'm sorry, I'm going nerd drill again. <laughs> I, I don't really. I, 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 I look at them when, when comparing pickups. When I was like, I looked at them a lot when I was looking at these bare knuckles. But uh, once I started comparing those and listening to them, it's I don't use that. It's just by the by my ear, you know. Yeah, because because got the right. What he what he's talking about is you can have um, what we call a hot pickup or uh, um, you know a kind of a mellower mellower pickup and that 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 is the ohm reading if it's a hot pickup like i've got i've got what i use in my guitars um a couple of them i i put in my cheap strats i put uh dirty fingers pickups from the 70s that are gibson pickups that are like 16 plus ohms oh, and they're yeah. really hot and aggressive yeah. um yeah. but then i've got a strat up here that's got a 3.4 ohm rating yeah. uh and it's it, it it totally makes it a, a different tone uh, yeah. for you new guitar players and stuff that are coming up. If you want something that sounds like a Strat, you need low ohm rating and it's got a single coil. Uh, but if you're going to do a humbucker in the bridge pickup of any guitar, you're probably going to want it to, to be a little hotter, you know? So, uh, but anyway, you said something also uh, about uh, MMA. How long have you yeah. been? Yeah. How long have you been a fan? Are you a F UFC guy? Do you like? You said he taught. Yeah, I, I, didn't yeah. you say you yeah, taught? I love, I start, what's that? You, you said taught. you taught. Yeah, I taught for a while. That's right. I I, I taught fighters for four years. I had a, a gym up in Flowery Branch called Bare Knuckle MMA, but it, you know, B E A R like the animal. We our, we had our we had a <laughs> our uh, our mascot or whatever our logo was a was a Care Bear, oh, and nice. his little his little thing was a fist oh, <laughs> on yeah, his nice. belly. You know, yeah, we were we were we were a bunch of goofballs. We we leave your ego at the door, kind of a gym, bunch of hippies rolling around. But nice. we had we had a lot of fun with it. I I, I started training in uh, what, what, 1986. I started training Taekwondo, and I just I just moved on. I saw. Um, you know, I saw the, the the early UFCs, and I was I was on the hunt, man. I, you couldn't find jujitsu anywhere back then, but I was at a gym in, uh, in north of Atlanta in, in ninety seven or eight, and I saw a dude with a Japanese jujitsu shirt on. You know, it was, it was j j Mark Moore jujitsu. It wasn't spelled like Brazilian jujitsu, but I'm like, dude, you you know jujitsu? And he's like, yeah, man, I teach cats out of my gym. He's like, give me thirty bucks a month, you can come over every Saturday. Fuck immediately, yeah. man. I'm over there every so what Saturday. Part of Atlanta, north. Guy. You say north of Flowery, Atlanta. Flowery, no, Flowery just Bay. north of Atlanta. No, I, at this it was Norcross. Oh, oh okay. Norcross. Okay. Yeah. yeah. At that at that time, I was in Norcross. Yep. Yeah. And then I started training with him, and then I and then I started. You know, after that, short they started gym started popping up. So I finally found a, a gym. In fact, I was working at a bar farther north up in Gwinnett, uh, and the owner of that bar, uh, I, I, he hired me as a bouncer, and then uh, eventually I, be, I became head bouncer up there. But he pay, started paying for my training, so he put me in a really good school up. Uh, this is oh, it's like uh, oh two. I want to say oh two. Uh, he put me in a gym up in Gwinnett that had Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, Muay Thai. Uh, some traditional kickboxing and stuff too, which I took some weapons training and then just uh, general MMA rules as well training. And I, and I was in there four to six hours a day for the longest time. And I just, I loved it. You know, so, you know, still, still, still sober trying to just trying to be distracted and oh, yeah. I'm a hundred miles an hour, you know, I and that was that. A great, I love that stuff. <laughs> and then, uh, and I want to say 10, maybe oh eight to in th that area for four years had a, opened up my gym. And, uh, and of course I'm, you know, I'm in my, I guess I'm at 30 at this time, early thirties and I'm starting to, my injuries are starting to hurt a little bit more and I'm yeah. starting to collect more and more of them, yeah. uh, healing slower and stuff like that. But I still, I had a good, 
good bunch of guys with me. So I, and then after a while I shut the gym down, decided to start touring. Yeah. And, uh, and then I still, I, I have places that I train still. Uh, yeah. I was going to say, are you, are you still I active? Wear, I wear these when I play everything. Cause just cause of my arthritis, it's, you know. Oh yeah, but totally. I, yeah, my I, hands are. I know Ray doesn't like me talking about it, but I do it on every podcast. Now I'm going to do it. <laughs> How old are you? 45. 45. Yeah. So you probably kick my ass. I was going to say, we could probably <laughs> spar a little yeah. bit this coming weekend. Could, oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm just could, <laughs> could roll. Uh, you don't want to go down the road with a, with a, uh, no, a Brazilian I, I, it was a total joke. <laughs> uh, I, I did actually, uh, uh, wrestle and I was a grappler and, uh, okay. and so I could still kick his ass though. You wouldn't be able to, I'm you scrappy. Wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to move. <laughs> um, but, but, your th- your thoughts and uh, we are totally going away from uh, music stuff here but uh your thoughts on uh you know strikers grapplers bjj um you kind of have to in the, in today's game uh you kind of have to be all of those if you're totally. going to be successful at all back in the day you could be uh, really good at one discipline and and hold your own but it slowly but surely uh yeah. You have to be a master of them all. Look at John Jones this weekend. Yeah, that's right. Came back yeah. as a heavyweight, gets it, the title after yeah. three years. Made it look easy. Yeah. Against an, unde- an undefeated. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, just made it look easy. All right, so Shit. let me let me end that nonsense. Okay. Where, where, can, <laughs> where, can, where can we hear your music at? Like, yeah. where do we go? Where are you hosting it? Can, so. Yeah. Uh, you can get it on you can get it on all any digital platform. I, I got everything up at Reverb Nation as well. You can go to my website, gypsytrashmfer.com. Gotcha. Um it's all up there. And then the new album, of course, will be on all platforms. And you can get you can get physical copies at my at, at my shows, which the calendar is also on Reverb Nation or on my website. And okay. do you have any kind of cool management or anybody uh booking you is there i i, I use regional i use uh, different regional cats i got a cat up in wisconsin and, and nothing's exclusive but i'll give them my give them my dates let them fill up as much as they can so i can focus on something else and then gotcha. when a certain time out i start looking and filling in the holes cool uh, do, do you have any um do you have any tips and pointers for for a band that's uh you know looking to expand out of the atlanta area uh and and trying to get dates, uh, like tips, even as of like, you know, a press kit, EPK, any kind of that, that kind of stuff. And yeah, I just, I I've been saying, and I don't know if it's the right way or not, but it works for me, but you just got to keep going. You're going to get, you're going to get about 5% responses from the venues. So if you, if you want gigs, hit up venues, hit up, hit up everybody, hit up booking agents or have your booking agent contact everyone and expect 5% responses. And those aren't all yeses. Expect 5% of people to get back to you, whether it's no and may, and you hope for that. Yes. But you know, we, we started this off about 200, 200 emails to every city. Uh, and we, you know, we weren't double booking anywhere. That's for sure. But you, you just got to, if you believe in yourself, go build that rep- rapport with the uh, different venues, different yeah. booking agents, yeah. different radio stations, all that, you, you know, show, show them that you're worth it. Show them you're going to, you're going to make it worth it to them. That you're serious. You know, work yeah. together. That's right. Yeah. And, and would you guys just say, okay, Hey, uh, Tuesday next week, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to do these 50 emails. You do those 50, you work kind of yeah, together. So we, yeah. We, we, we pick a city. Yeah, we we'd say we established here's the dates for this city, and that's and we hit the ground that way. Yeah, that's you a good know? approach. Yeah, it's a good approach. It's a that what what they call that carpet bombing back in the day. You know, yes. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you know, um. So, uh, what what after after you get done with the uh, the showcase on the twelfth, which is uh, next Sunday. Um, mm-hmm. Uh, what's your next gig after that? Uh, you you hit the road. What but, what are you doing? Well, I'll be I'll be coming home from St. Augustine the day before that. Uh-huh. Um, so that my the tour actually does the tour actually starts next week. Um, I, but I'm out and back for about a month. I'll go to St. Augustine next week. Come back for the Sunday show. I'll do my Monday live stream. I'll, I I host an open mic out on this side of town every Wednesday. That rolls all the way through the first week of April. Where's um, that? At? Yeah, where's that? A place called Moonshiners in Brazelton, Georgia. Yeah, yeah we have we have such a cool time up there. I played there several times. Okay, yeah, it's always a blast. 
Um, I do that every Wednesday, and then and then once bike night starts up, well, I'll I'll be hitting the road. But generally, when bike night starts up, I, we alternate bike night and open bike night. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So then I'll hit the road. So I'm going this next few weeks, St. Augustine, Tupelo, St. Augustine. Then I'm home for a weekend to get everything together, and then I leave for a couple months the following week, starting in Clarksville, Tennessee. Cool. I got two shows in Clarksville. Then Sounds Tupelo. Like some stuff going on. Yeah, yeah for then, sure, for then, sure. Then Tupelo, and then where? Uh, Tupelo, Chicago. I'll, I'll anchor down in Wisconsin for I think five weeks, and I'll I'll get all, all over Wisconsin, and then I'll go over to Pittsburgh, and a uh, Clarksburg, West Virginia, and I'll close out the tour with a big festival over in Clarksburg with uh, Puddle of Mud, Saving Able, Flaw, Trapped. Nice. Uh, that that was the others. festival that you were Blue Ridge or something. You were, what was that that festival there that you're talking about? You've you've played it now for uh, a few times, I guess, right? Oh. Um, I've done Sturgis every time. I done. I, I'm not. I'm not sure. Uh, Sheila Fest. I did for four years. Um, I, I'm sure. I'm, I'm sure. I've forgotten something. I tend to. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's that. the hardest yeah. thing. And what I've found is like, uh, and 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 everybody like what he's talking about. Uh, doing doing these dates. These dates were like figured out months and months ago. How, when do you start uh, emailing for festivals? Like say. Uh, like for festivals that are coming up this uh, spring, you probably are uh, sending emails. Yeah, they do it a year in advance. Pretty yeah, much, yeah. I mean, it, um, I know, it, and it depends. A lot of cats are different. Um, I know that when you when it's time to book Sturgis, you want to be st- talking to them about January. Yeah. Uh, to book, uh, what's that? August. Yeah. But some sometimes you you're sometimes you want to look at like for example Daytona. I'm booking them twelve months in advance yeah. right now. Right. So the twelve Unless months is usually good... spots that where somebody's bailing out and you need to fill it yep. in. Yeah. 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 Wow. Well, it sounds like to me like uh, this whole music career thing, touring for you is uh, a, an excuse to take your motorcycles on the road. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's exactly what it is. Yeah, man. <laughs> Always got a, I always got a trailer with me and the gears in the van, <laughs> the so, motorcycles in the trailer. Yeah. Okay. So you, you travel with a van, um, mm-hmm. and that's your, that's your home. Are you literally, uh, do you have, uh, uh, contacts and people that have become family when you go to Wisconsin that you stay at their houses? You're not staying at holiday inns. Are, is, no, no. You know, the, 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 the most I'm going to do spend to stay anywhere is 15 bucks to camp somewhere i'll I'll sleep in the woods wake up next to a river go for a run and head on to the next yeah, there's usually hardcore, there's usually... Dude. no he he legitimately is a gypsy he is hardcore yeah yeah totally i, I love it man you're I one of it. my and favorites there, yeah there'll be bathrooms <laughs> there, there'll usually a bathroom and shower on these on a campsite oh, property yeah. anyway yeah. hey when we were on tour we stopped at the uh planet fatness is what we called it <laughs> totally right? and went yeah. in and got the the uh <laughs> use their showers the I, I, the, the, I i i got any I, i'm a member at any time and i and yeah, i hit well you can get I, there well, i mean i go in i actually i'll work out but i certainly am using that as my my opportunity to hit a of hit course. a shower somewhere you pull though. in there you get your your daily free pass take a shower mm-hmm. and whatever else you need totally, totally. Done, out of there that's awesome yeah. um so like i said around covid uh 2020 or so i started following you and watching uh i was like how is this guy in wisconsin how's this guy in south dakota you know you were doing your thing there um mm-hmm. and then i came across uh, a series of pictures of um uh one of your bikes uh had an accident or something oh, right um, yes yes so i mean if you're gonna ride it you're gonna have those types of things what what happened to that uh, there's a couple but i assume you're talking about the most recent last year at sturgis i had just gotten my 22 electroglide and and uh, I'm an aspiring photographer, and I was riding up the main highway back to full throttle, and it was we had that big super, that once in a lifetime super moon, and I and the bear the bear butte is right here on my right, and there's a dip in the butte, and the moon's coming up at the at the level of that, so I'm trying to watch where I can pull over and get a picture of this because it's awesome. So I finally get to where I want to be. I pull off to the side, throw it on the kickstand. It's it's gravelly. This is a it's a two lane highway. It's, it's a 65, I think 55 or 65 mile an hour. And of course there's bikes everywhere. It's, it's 10, 11 PM. And, uh, as a group, I got my camera in night mode 
So as I'm waiting for groups of bikes to go by, so the light will dim down, I'm just kind of waiting. And a group of about 40 bikes goes by. So I'm down in the ditch, my bike's up on the road. And I, and I just kind of look as the bikes are going by. And I look over just in time to see that my bike had kind of shaken oh, to, no. to the edge, tipped oh, over man. and slid down the hill on its oh, side. Oh, no. I mean, right. And it's not even like I looked away at half and I looked over and it was down there. I looked over and saw it happen. Oh, no. <laughs> you got, so in the fall, uh, but I, I couldn't get, I, I picked it up. I, I ripped, I have an in, injury from, from training actually and fighting that, uh, a shoulder injury that I, I further ripped digging my bike up out of here. And then I couldn't get it up the hill. Three or four guys came, we got it out of the hill. So the lights, the hazard lights are on. Well, the, the, the lever had twisted and snapped the wires inside the handlebars. Uh, so it was out of commission. Uh, I had it towed back to full throttle. Coolest part after a couple of days was one of the guys from Texas that stays at our campsite every year. I, I know him solely from there was like, uh, man, I could probably fix that. I'm like, man, I mean, are you sure are you confident with that? He's like, I'm a, I'm a retired electrician. I was like, I've known, I've been staying at Sturgis with you for 10 years. And I didn't know that about you. I thought he was, I thought he was a musician because he travels around with musicians all the time. Right. Anyway, dude, dude has me holding the towel up because it's windy while he's in there with a cigarette in his mouth. And, a, and he did a, <laughs> like, you couldn't pull these wires apart. Yeah. Things, put it back together, started it right up. It welded. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Wow. I yeah, called like gu bubble gum and yeah. aluminum foil. I called, you know? I called Harley Davidson today. Killer treat. Yeah. They, they dealt with my ultra, uh, ultra glide last year and uh -huh. they fixed, you know, just did some maintenance on it for me. And I, I've got a, a an O one XL 1200 that I want to get just small work done. Nothing big. Yeah. You know, I want to get a new, pet cop wire eh, just some gas stuff needs to be done with the tank okay yeah yeah you know, new now i want to get a new battery just small stuff so they're like well what year is it and i said it's a 2001 xl 1200 yeah we don't work on anything older than a 2003 anymore like, yeah wow. they oh, wow. refuse work because your bike is they too said old. that they're getting calipers that are breaking they're they're getting like harley legit harley parts that are like breaking oh so, wow after yeah. a certain huh. year, which I, it sounds crazy to me. I don't know. Yeah. I love the motorcycles are great. The company is a little iffy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it, it's interesting. That company goes through uh, ups and downs. You know, they got, you know, yeah. years, decades that are great. Decades that uh -huh. are not decades that are great. Decades that are not. Uh, I just had a, 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 you're in Atlanta today. It, what was the temperature today? Like 75. It was beautiful. Yeah. So I, nice, I did about yeah. 60, hey, did. I did 65 miles today and, uh, nice. he mine. keeps rubbing it in my face. It's like, get your bike fixed. <laughs> I'm trying. Get I'm your trying. Bike fixed. <laughs> oh, man. Yep. But, uh, anyway, we digress away from music again, but that's, that's the beautiful thing is, uh, you know, like you were just saying about this guy that you, you had probably broken bread with for 10 years on these, on these, these tours and mm -hmm. you didn't know a small, big portion of what he did for a living you know that's kind of what we want to do with this with this podcast it's like yeah we're all musicians we're all making original music but we also have interests like mma or like mm -hmm. i you know i coach ice hockey um that's you know lots of different things um that make us who we are and uh you know it just gives us an opportunity to to learn about each other and and, yeah. and get new friends you know yeah okay. definitely so, uh, I guess th the next thing is, uh, you're releasing your record. You're going to, uh, you're going to put it on the streaming services, uh, LSD two. Um, yep. what are your thoughts about videos making videos? Is it need needed? <laughs> Do you, is it worthwhile? Is it a waste of time? Are they oh, fun? Man, I, I had a lot of fun making videos. I, I did, I put out one. I think I put out seven or eight videos one year. I did five, five of them myself. Um, the, the fifth one, or I put out five and it was the sixth one. I, we got almost done with it. My computer crashed and we lost everything. Ouch. I have not touched video editing since then. I, yeah. I was, I, I'm still butthurt about that. That sounds really familiar. Yeah. Well, it sounds like <laughs> our podcast the other night, right? Yeah, totally. Right. Yeah, so you, understand, uh, but, you understand. yeah, yeah. But I, I, uh, I, I enjoyed it. They're, they're expensive. I mean, if you're going to have yeah. somebody to do it, it you got to have backing and I do not. Yeah. So I, I'm like, well, I'll take it on myself. And, and for a while there, do. I was, I was take, I was, 
I was killing it. I did different styles. I, uh, one of my looping songs, I did a, I did a video of me, four, four of me in a living room jamming together. You know, just because that's what the looping is, you know, just kind of it's funny. We're all in interacting. It's super nerdy, but just silly stuff like that. Uh, but uh, it's, I still like the I still like the music video part of it. I still like the albums with the, with pictures and lyrics in them, you know. Right. I, I still I still put out all kinds of artwork and, and, and do physical. I still I sell CDs at every show. Right. Yeah. Right. You know, I still I, I like the old school stuff like that. I, I think mu I think music videos are cool uh ne necessary no but if you do them i mean for your your fans are gonna love it yeah gonna well um agree. you you just talked about uh the video with four of you doing uh doing you know the the video and such for the loop but uh did you happen to catch uh, uh the wolfgang van halen video where uh he was playing all the instruments and you know he was the drummer he was the bass player and he walked oh, in oh no it's, it's like his, for his first video yeah, yeah his first video was amazing okay. uh, recommended if you go on youtube look uh, up wolfgang I'll have to go check it out uh but it, but it's funny because uh you know he obviously played everything in the studio and so like he's standing there on bass he's standing there on guitar and you know, he's like, even arguing with himself. Yeah, he's arguing with himself. <laughs> he's the producer in the studio. Yeah. He's yeah. The, okay. Yeah. yeah, it's excellent. I'll have to, I'm gonna have to go check that out. It's that fantastic. sounds fantastic. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I, cool. I I like uh, I like seeing you know creative it, with a sense of humor. You yeah. know, yeah. He yeah. obviously is not taking himself too seriously, although he probably yeah. can now. You know, but uh, <laughs> well, it's cool. Yeah. And he's using his dad's mammoth i mean come on how cool is that well what's even cooler is that he's he's doing all of this in 5150 in right. the in the studio yeah. i mean talk yeah. about talk about getting an inheritance i mean yeah, no doubt. hey you can keep the money got the uh, ultimate inheritance yeah sure. he's got frankenstein yeah. you know it's crazy <laughs> um, yeah, the, our drummer from the drummer that i played with in our empire is is his drummer oh really on Garrett whitlock and Mar yeah. and mammoth yeah yeah yeah, the same when 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 uh, Garrett and when they got the management contracts and Garrett Garrett and I ended up leaving, uh, and when I Empire went on tour, Garrett went to play with Tremonti and I went off and did the solo thing, and then Garrett moved on and is playing with uh with Mammoth. Wow. wow. Well, he's awful. Not currently good. I'm sorry. He's awfully. He's awfully good. <laughs> yeah, awfully he's good. Really, <laughs> he's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So. Uh, you know, one of the other things that we wanted to talk about was, uh, you know, you're obviously, you know, an original artist. You are you. You're going to do you. Have you ever done, uh, you know, cover band or tribute band or, or are you just like, I'm going to do this my way, gypsy trash I, or nothing? I do have a trio. I have a trio that uh, we've been playing together. It's my, me and my brother and a, and a good friend of ours. We've been playing together maybe 20 years now as a as as a cover trio just hitting bars around town and we played a long time ago we used to play this is when i was still bouncing at a couple of these clubs uh one of them had us in on sunday nights we started at midnight and played till 4 a.m oh wow and there was and it was all whenever everything closed that's where everybody went you know at least everybody in our in our circle so it, everybody who was working or everybody who wanted to go out all the bars in gwinnett closed so you come down to atlanta or, or tucker is where it was and uh Flanagan's was going till four and, and, uh, our singer had a way of getting, you know, getting them naked. Uh, <laughs> I was uh, just uh, going to say, are we sure we're yeah. talking about a bar here? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. they started advertising that and they changed our name to titties after midnight and they started putting up <laughs> Sunday nights, titties after midnight. Wow. And, uh, that was our, that was our band name for a while. And we just, we, we quit after a while. He, you know, we all used to party a good bit and, uh, he, you know, my brother's uh, got married. He's got a family now. And we recently decided to get back together maybe a year, year and a half ago and start doing fun gigs again, uh, just for the hell of it. And we, and, and I was like, you know, realize we're going to have to change the band name. <laughs> and so we're now we're king of clubs. So we, kind of, yeah, uh... we, we just, we just go around and have fun. We, we play covers, but that's, that's not, that's not any of our, we all have our original stuff. You know, I have, I have, three original projects and yeah, my, my brother that, writes right? country music and stuff like that. Actually, my brother's uh, writing an instructional book for drums and he teaches drums out of his, he's got a very successful drum, drum uh, music school uh, that starts with drums, but he's got other teachers for other That's, stuff. Well. What's his name? Lee Tyler Edwards. Lee uh, Tyler. Drum Star Studios is the name of his school up in the, they just moved from Loganville to Monroe. Okay. Awesome. Out there in the country. 
Yeah. yeah. Is he doing this uh, via video uh, or? Uh, I don't know if he's doing video. He, they come over there. Um, he's got, or in his old studio, I think he's got a bigger room now, but in the old studio, he had three kits always set up and mic'd. Uh, he's got himself a kit and, and in this huge room, he's got a kid, you know, on his, on his own kit, they're, they're wearing, uh, you know, their mouthpieces and stuff. And the, the lesson is projected onto the wall in front of both of them. The whole thing is videotaped and the, the parents, or if it's an adult, they, they get a, a DVD of their, of the whole experience and That's their lesson cool. and everything. Uh, the kids get YouTube videos and stuff like that of them playing whatever songs and That's stuff. Awesome. Like he's, he's killing it. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's kind of a school of a school of rock thing. Yeah, totally. Yeah. He, he, he's a, he's a, He's a, he's a, he goes to church and everything. And, and a lot of these, a lot of his church family are, are a lot of his clientele. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. cool. Well, that, I like to hear that, that he's, you know, implementing kind of technology, you know, into learning. Like, yeah. you know, it, it, it's one thing to have a one drum set, say, okay, they're going to do a paradiddle, paradiddle, paradiddle. <laughs> All right, sit down, you do it. No. Yep. We're going to have multiple drum sets. We're going to have the, the lesson plan on the wall. I mean, that's, mm-hmm. that's uh, yeah, outside the it's box. It's pretty neat. Yeah, for sure. It's real cool. Well, we're, Hey, we're looking forward to, uh, we're looking forward to this weekend. Uh, like I said, you are going on at nine 30 down at the uh, dark horse. It sounds like you'll be upstairs at nine 30 to 10. Uh, yep. We're going to go on. Hope Sanker is going to go on from 10 40 to 11 10 after you guys downstairs. So, Really hoping to catch up with you down there. Maybe we'll have yep, some chicken yep. wings. They got some really good chicken wings yeah. down there. Yeah, heck yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, man. It'll be cool. Thank you again so much for doing this. The, the repeat. Of course. It, of course. It always, it's always a bummer when you have a malfunction like that and we got to redo it. It right? ain't no thing. I'm glad y'all could bring me back through. Yeah, you, you're you great. I'm looking forward to hearing you. Oh, and also, heck Dixie, yeah. we, uh, when you, I mean, it sounds like you're going to be busy for a little bit. Will you be back in Atlanta mm-hmm. in the summer, to, like summer? Uh, unfortunately there, I will be spending some summer time down here in the South, uh, but not too long. I'll be back uh, the fir- uh, first or second week of June. I'm, I'm still working on some bookings. I might go into June a little bit, but currently I'm set to come back first week of June and I'll be out. I'll be heading out for Sturgis. So I'll be home. We'll say mid June through mid July. I'll be home for five weeks. I think. Okay. Well, we'll, we'll have to stay in touch. Yeah. Well, hit us up. Let's go for a ride. Let's do a ride. Let's yeah, go. All three oh, of us. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. I'll be doing a lot of riding in that time. Yeah. Okay. All right, brother. Well, you keep keep the rubber side down, and uh, and we'll see you when you come back through. Yeah, we'll see you next week. Thanks for having me again, cool. guys. Thanks, All right, guys. brother. Thank you. Later.
You're watching the Original Music Atlanta podcast.